You've probably heard the old saying, go big or go home. That's certainly the case with the new Baofeng UV25 Pro Max HT. In this video, we're going to take a look at the new Baofeng UV25 Pro Max Multiband HT. The first thing you'll notice is they aren't kidding when they say Max. This thing is a brute. Information on the AliExpress sales page says that this is an upgrade to the Baofeng AR-152 tactical style radio that's been out for a while. There are lots of folks who like these large radios because of their styling, their ability to fit on tactical vests, and for the large battery. The UV-25 looks very much like the large HTs carried by first responders and feels solid to the touch. As we go on, welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of electronic gadgets that catch my eye. Please click the thumbs up button if you find this video helpful and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. If you've seen some of my recent reviews on Baofeng radios, you know that spurious emissions are a problem with many of them. The same can be said of this one, too. In the 2-meter band, the radio doesn't come close to meeting the FCC standards. In the 1.25-meter band, the second spur is well within the standards, but the third, up at 666 megahertz, was over the limit. The rules in the 70 centimeter band are different, but using the same measures as the 2 meter band, the radio is well within the limits for those frequencies. If 70 centimeters is your target, the radio seems just fine. As I mentioned earlier, the UV25 Pro Max is a beast. It weighed in on a postage scale and without the hard gooseneck antenna, it came in at a whopping 20.5 ounces or more than a pound and a quarter. By comparison, the UV-17 weighs in at approximately 10.5 ounces. The battery is just over 50% of the UV-25's total weight. It's listed as a 2800 milliamp hour battery, so it should provide lots of operating time. The radio has a 55 intrusion protection score, which means it's dust protected and will withstand low pressure water jets. As we'll see in a minute, the radio circuitry itself appears to be the same as the UV5RH and RM. The UV25 has the same screen font, menus, and basic operation is the same as other Baofangs too. So with all that out of the way, Let's take a look at what you'll get. So here's the box that the UV25 comes in. Notice here that it says that's the European version. We're going to see what that means here in just a second. But uh, it's a fairly small box. It came through the mail just fine. Let's see what was inside. First, we'll take a quick look at the user's manual. And uh, it's for the UV25 series. There are several radios that fall into this series with a couple of different names, which is not unusual for Baofeng radios. If you've seen one Baofeng user manual, you've seen them all. It has charging tips, important tips, the main features, diagram of the radio, uh, and then some step-by-step -step explanations of how to program the radio and do some of the other common tasks, as well as a list of all of the items in the menu. Again, if you've seen one, you've pretty much seen them all, and it's enough to get you started. As I mentioned earlier, I got the European version. The US version was out of stock. And besides the difference in the plugs here on this uh, USB transformer, none of the things were any different. So uh, since I've got a million of these guys laying around, I didn't wait for it to come back in stock. I just got the European version. Unlike some European versions, the frequencies were not locked. The thing is unlocked so you can access the full amateur bands uh, with this radios. I've checked and verified that. And then, of course, there's a USB-C charging cable. That came with the radio and so that is all very handy we'll program the radio using you know a typical ftdi or baofeng branded programming cable that i'll show you when we go through the radio tour and then of course it comes with a belt clip and a wrist lanyard for those of you who like to use those accessories 
One of the main differences in this radio is that it comes with one of these stick gooseneck style antennas. Uh, you see these uh, uh, mounted in radios that are attached to tactical vests and other type of clothing. And so uh, since this radio uh, really is pretty big and will fit in that kind of a use pattern and be appealing to those who like that kind of appearance, uh, it's got this, uh, uh, this gooseneck antenna. So let's take a quick look at the exterior of the radio. So here I've got the radio sitting side by side next to one of my smaller radios. It's the TID Radio H3. And you can see there's a huge difference in the size of this radio. As, as you might expect, there's also a huge difference in the weight of the radio. So as we look at the radio, we have the speaker here. We have the screen here. Buttons that you're familiar with, the home or the menu button, the exit button up and down. Uh, for channels, you can type in channels using the keyboard, and then you can use, when you're in menu mode, these buttons to do a quick movement to those menu items. So, for example, menu 6 is going to give you the um, backlight controls. Um, menu 0 is going to give you squelch and so forth. One of the interesting things about this radio I found is that a long press on the 8 labeled beep uh, will when it's not in menu mode, will change the power, which is really handy. So you can alternate between high, medium, and low power by pressing the 8 button. When we move to this side of the radio, we've got the push to talk. We've got a programming key up here. And we've got two keys here that we can program. Across the back, we've got the place where the belt clip attaches and the screws are mounted there in the radio. Here's the USB-C port for the charging of this battery, and it's a really huge battery. It makes up almost half, or actually more than half, of the total weight of the battery. It has an IP55 intrusion protection score, so it's got screwed down battery here, so you're gonna need a common screwdriver to uh, remove the battery. There's nothing on the bottom, so the battery charges via USB-C, so it doesn't come with a charging cradle. Uh, over here, we've got the the typical K1 connector, the mic and speaker outputs for a speaker mic or, of course, for that programming cable. And then on the top, we have the on-off button here, which is protected by a dial and it's got a very hefty appearance and a stiff movement to it, so it's very nice. The flashlight and then the antenna connector, which is the SMA um, male, which is typical for these Baofeng radios. So that's a quick uh, tour of the exterior of the radio. Now, let's do a quick power on tour. Hopefully that was loud enough for you to hear. It's a typical Baofeng female voice. The screen comes up and you're gonna see that this screen is very typical to the UV5RH, UV5RM, and some of the other radios that Baofeng's released recently. And in fact, when we take a look at some of the menus, you're gonna see that it's the same. So I suspect that at the heart of this radio is the same as those other radios. It's just, you know, the size and the size of the battery that are going to be the primary difference between this and some of the other radios. Here on the screen, you can see the D, which means dual mode is enabled. I've got medium power on the um, UHF call channel. The little red main means that that's the radio register that's going to transmit. Down here, I'm in channel mode, and you can see I'm on high power. The circle C means there's a CT CSS, and it's got a negative offset there. And then both have these uh, power uh, meters here at the bottom that will show and uh, the power as you press the button, and then it'll, and then the green light up here is going to show red when transmitting and green when receiving. And then here at the top also is the battery indicator. So that's pretty typical of what you've uh, been seeing. To access a menu, you just press the green key. Menu. And as I mentioned, if I wanted to go to menu six, which is the ABR, and I've got that on right now, so I can not have this flashing while, we're, while we are recording, we can just move or we can go up. Menu. We can go up with our buttons or we can use our numbers to go to the double one. So for example, if I wanted to go to menu 24, which is the um, multifunction display A, the upper one, I've got it set uh, to name when I am in 
uh, channel mode. It's in um, frequency mode right now. And then the upper menu limit is, I think, about 40. So let's go here to 40. And it's got the power on message, voice, primary. And we've got menu item 41. 42 is a reset. Power on password. Stopwatch, which is one of those new things with the recent radio releases from Baofeng. And then item 45 tells me my uh, firmware and hardware version for this particular radio. When I get up to 45, it goes back to zero, which is squelch. Now to activate the menu, you do as you do with all these little guys. Uh, when it's open like this, press menu a second time, you'll see that it starts to flash down there. Now these letters are kind of small and the blue and red are kind of hard to see, so I hope you can see them, but it's flashing, flashing three. So if I want it to go to um, squelch level two, I press up and then press menu again. And then the little red dot goes by the number two. I like three, so I'm going to press it again and I'm going to press the menu button down. Now three's flashing. I've confirmed it as three and then I can exit my menu here. Now I'd like to call your attention up here to where it says M above the four, six, two. And so I'm going to press a long press on the eight. You can see it changed to L, and it changed to H. So high, medium, and low power with a button press on the 8 button, which makes this really pretty handy. Over here on the side, we can program the side keys, side key number one, the, sec the one right below the push to talk. I've got it set for FM, and I can um, scan through those, or in the software, I can add uh, channels. Another short press turns it off, a long press. I've got that, the monitor mode, that'll break the squelch. You may have seen that the little line filled up and the green light came on, meaning that the squelch was basically off. Down on the bottom button, the short press, we've got the flashlight. Another press will flash, another flash will turn it off. And then a long press on the bottom, We'll turn on the alarm, um, and so you're going to want to set that to sight so it makes a noise here but doesn't transmit an alarm unless you've got a special need for uh, that alarm. So that's a quick power-on tour of the front part of the panel and the side panels. Again, the K1 is, is over here, volume is here, and we've just taken a look at the flashlight. So that's a quick look at the UV25 Pro Max. The UV25 Pro Max claims to be a 10 watt radio. Let's put it on the power meter and see what we get. So let's take a look at the power output for the UV25 Pro Max. I'm feeding the power into my MFJ874 that's got a dummy load there screwed in on the back. So let's start with the 2 meter range and high power. High power 2 meter. Note that I have the uh, range there at the 20 meter, so we'll be reading it on the second arc from the bottom. So here we are with high power. Looks to be about 8.2 on high power. Then on medium power, we'll change this down to the 5 watt range, so we'll be reading on the bottom arc. So here's medium power, about 4.4, and low power on 2 meters. About one and a half. So let's skip up to the 1.25 meter range. Here's high power on 1.25. We'll go back to the 20 selection and the second arc. And we didn't need to do that. It looks to be about 3.1, 3.2 watts on high power. So medium power on 1.25 meters, about one and a half, and on low, about one and a half. So those are those two. Let's skip up to the 70 centimeter range and see what we get there. So on high power, we'll go back to that 20 watt setting, second arc, high power on 70 centimeters, just a little over five watts, 5.2. 
on medium power back to the lower arc about 3.9 or right at 4 watts medium power and low power about 2.7 2.8 watts so that's the power readings here on this UV 25 series radio here's what the radio sounds like radio doesn't come with anything programmed into the channel memories, which is a good thing. You can program channels from the menus the same way as other Baofeng radios. I prefer to use either the factory CPS or Chirp. In the case of the UV25 Pro Max, both work. Use the T6 UV series CPS from Baofeng or use the UV17 Pro Choice in Chirp. There are three UV17 choices in CHIRP. You want to use the UV17 Pro choice, not the UV17 or the UV17 Pro GPS. I'll do a separate video on those CPSs for those who are interested. Last, let's talk about range. Since the range is so dependent on geography, I didn't try to dream up some range check. I did, however, step onto my patio to see if I could hit the repeaters I usually hit from that spot. The UV25 Pro Max hit all the repeaters plus a couple I don't normally access. So to wrap this up, I'd say the UV25 Pro Max is a niche radio. Its size and weight will limit it to users who want a big radio that will fit a sling or tactical vest. The large battery and rugged construction might make this a good radio to have around a campsite, but most wouldn't want to take it on a hike. A responsible ham would likely limit operations to the 70 centimeter band. If your area is like the Phoenix area, 70 centimeter repeaters are plentiful and are actually taking over. The 999 channel memories large battery, as well as the broadcast FM and NOAA weather channel access, makes the UV25 Pro Max a budget-priced radio that preppers would want to consider for their emergency comms kit. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Join me over here for a look at some third-party antennas you might find helpful. Thanks for watching and 73.